Welcome to episode 92 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues Welfare. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today, and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rarbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb is a father of three and shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for Season 3 of the Liberty Dad Podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues, where each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book, a little early there a moment ago, but from the book, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view welfare. With that, let's dive right in. Tub, hey, you're back. I, I am indeed. I have not run you off. Not not yet. Not All yet. Right. You know, today's change to how the house runs might do it. But we'll right. see how that plays out. Yeah. So I I made him you said that on purpose because you knew that I was going to be transparent and tell oh, I, I just was going to let it fly. People started going, man, what's happening inside the right. house? Like, you know, struggle yeah. with drama. Yeah, there is some drama. I made him take his shoes off. For real. Before he came into the that, office. That's real, that's real life, yeah. Right. So um, many of you may know that my wife is Asian and there's a particular view about shoes inside the house in many Asian homes. And For real. So, and it's actually kind of popular. I, I think I've heard a lot of people that like have no, there's like no Asians in their family. All right. And a lot of people like, you know, like... I there guess, are there are people with no Asians in their family. With like white, you know, just white people, I guess. Oh, there we and, go. Okay. Um, just regular white folk. Yeah, just white folk who okay. are like, oh, I don't wear my shoes in my house, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. Hey, so... I didn't necessarily said that. I didn't think it was an so, Asian thing. I was like, hey, don't mess up my rugs type of thing is how I saw that. Right. So, um, And that's how I think most people would see that. That's how I always saw it. Right. Thought, hey, that's an Asian thing. You well, can't do that here. I, I think but, a lot of it is the um, the idea that, you know, your shoes are out and about and they're dirty. And so I think it's more than just don't mess up my rugs. Oh, that's how uh, I thought. Because like when I visited my wife's, uh, her, her mother's home in Indonesia, mm-hmm. they didn't have any rugs in the house that I could recall, like no carpet. So okay. it was all like... You know, um, like tile or something like that. So at that point right there, you put it as a custom thing to a region, to a region of land. It's their custom. Right, right. I, I, I'm none of those. Well, that's not my problem. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll tell you, I'm, I'm completely off today. That's why. <clears throat> right. All right. That's why. It has nothing I to do with anything you. else. All right. So so none of that is the point he is, of why we're here. He is barefoot. Am I? No, I'm just kidding. No, I got socks on. I do have, I, in fact, in fact, I have my, I have my savior socks on. I, right. I'll show you later on. I got some Jesus on my socks right here. All right. So, all right. His, None of this is the point. His feet are protected. Indeed. Wherever he walks. So, with such thinking, let's say you just walk around outside barefoot and then you come right. in. I don't. No, neither do I. You I, know I absolutely I don't. I do not wear. But, but what happens if somebody does? When, uh, so, what, I don't know. Then? I don't what know. What if they just wear their socks outside? If they come walking into it, do they take their socks off? And I guess. We're going to do some follow-up questions. Yeah, fact, yeah. No, it's your wife. You do follow-up I questions. I feel like we're going to have to interview her. I don't know how going to go. Yeah, I think that's so what you should do like, with Get one of these lights and kind of like put it down on her and be like, so. Yeah. Um, you let me know when you're done how that played out. Right. Okay. Anyway. All right. So, back to the topic. We're talking about welfare today. At least that's what the intent is. We'll see how, we'll see how it plays out. Uh-huh. So let's start with the text from the book. Remember, we are going through Introduction to the Libertarian Party from Wes Benedict. And he has identified 20 different, 25 different topics. And he gives a short bit Very about right. it in each um, for each one of them in one of the chapters. And then what we do is we just do this podcast and we expand We do the it. length of what he didn't do. Right, right. We do the job correctly. We, just yeah, kidding. We, 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 just we, kidding, Wes, if you're watching. And you know he is. You, like, you I, know he's watching. Yeah, At I've some seen point somebody said, hey, you right right now. Need to check this out. Okay. Just kidding. No, no. All right. All right. So here's the text. So the text says, libertarians oppose government welfare. It's wrong to force someone to pay for the support of others. And welfare corrupts people's motivation. A strong economy is much better for poor people than welfare. Private organizations and individuals are best at determining who truly needs help, and they generally encourage behavior that leads towards self-sufficiency. So let me ask you, where is he wrong on this? 
Okay, so there's a quote for you guys. We have covered welfare today um, because we didn't want to be on welfare too long. And there we go. So, but no, but you understand what I'm saying is that you look at that, and, and there's and, like, so the corny. way you ask the questions on welfare too long. It's coming. I got that in there. Um, but if you think about it, that's the premise of it. Right. It is that simple. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> now, granted, it doesn't stay that simple because you got to start having the conversation. Right. You know, where does it go to? How far? So here's what I did in my form of research. I know usually you're the analytical guy. You got all these numbers. You pull all this stuff up and all these facts and stuff. I just right. wing it sometimes. So. Okay. So mine this is what I found. The U.S. government spends about $668 billion a year on over 120 different welfare programs. Wow. 120 different ones. Okay. So. In 2017, the welfare per capita, they had some different areas. So in Connecticut, it was $1,068 per capita of somebody there getting welfare. So the whole, like, that's the whole state number. It's like if they, if they, if they give everybody the money that they're spending and they rationed it out evenly, everybody would get $1,068. Okay, okay? gotcha. And, and then for New York, it was $3,624 per person. D.C., Five thousand six hundred and forty nine dollars. Wow, is what each person. That's would how much get. they spend per capita of the population. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, because at first I was thinking you were saying like that's how much they they provide people. No, in but welfare. that's if if they were to actually gotcha. evenly distribute it type of thing. Gotcha. And, and I and I go like you started thinking about that. That's a lot of money. Right. Okay. And, and then once again, we got to go back to the idea that government doesn't produce money. Right. They take money. Right. Okay. So it has to come from somewhere. So I started. I'm like, okay. So. There are many different forms, I think, of welfare. Like, I didn't know there was 120 different right. programs. But like, the ones that I naturally thought of was... Seems small, actually. For real? For nationwide? Yeah. That's I mean, 120 different programs. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like government... One thing that government is good at finding is finding new ways to allocate money. Like, we need money for this group. We need money for that group. We need, you know, all these different but things. But does that make a difference if it's a one-time payout versus an ongoing program? Do, does the government ever have a one-time payout? Well, I think that what you're saying is, hey, we want to get money to this group for this time. And then right. they, that group gets their money and we kind of leave it alone for a while. Right. That type of thing. Whereas this is ongoing. Right. So you have, like what I put in here is direct checks. You get funds, mm -hmm. monthly checks, stuff along those lines. I uh, have SNAP, any type of food programs yep. that they have like that. Um, rent assistance. Okay. Um, earned it. Earned income credit. Okay. Like I started sitting there putting this little, because I had like Medicaid stuff along those lines, medical things. But I'm like, wait a minute, earned income credit is a form, if you think about it, of welfare. Right. Because they're giving you more money than you put into it based on whatever information right. you decide to give them. So I'm kind of, I look, I go, well, there's a lot of problems right there. Just right. Well, there's the money itself. Yeah. Which, which we talked about before is why I can't right now get behind open borders. Okay. Because of this right here, because these are all people right. that would be continually supporting, which they fall into a form of welfare. Right. Because we're stealing money from us to give it to somebody else. Right. And so I look at it, I go, all right, there's our problem. Close That's borders why I, is bigotry. I'm just. Uh, hey, it, it may be what it is for right now, but in the meantime, listen, I'm way more open to it if we get this mess here cleaned right. up. Right. No, I hear you. Now, I have often said that the reason why I think there's so many, so many forms of so much welfare giving is. And, and, I blame the church sometimes, as crazy as that sounds. Because here's what, ordinarily, a lot of these type of things are the things that the church would provide. Right. Like, if you were a part of an active community inside the church, and the church would then make sure are our people getting taken care of. Right. That they don't have to go get money from the government right. in order to live. And the problem is, I, I, I think that now churches have gotten lazy. Mm -hmm. And they just said, well, it's going to take care of the government's doing it. Right. And now the churches have even stopped trying to make right. a real effort into helping the people. Right. Well, to their credit, it seems that I recall many people complaining about the, 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 the uh, uh, drawing a blank on the word that I want, when churches would go and put out and say, hey, we're going to feed you, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And then they would say, but, you know, you have to listen to a sermon first. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would be upset about the stipulations that were uh, uh, tied to it. And I'm like, well, you know, if you're feeding me, I mean, the least I could do is listen that, to that, your sermon. That, you right. Know, like, like, we, like, we, I don't think that's there's anything I don't think it's absurd. inherently wrong now, with that. We, we didn't go. Well, we did something similar to that. Um, like we have a food pantry at our church. Mm hmm. And uh, we don't advertise it much. Usually just the people around keep it busy enough. Right. <laughs> OK. So uh, but we, we kind of started telling them, like, hey, listen, um, we don't give out food on church service days. Right. Like if you come to church service, 
Right. You know what? Great. We're happy to have you here, but we're not going to give you food on these days. Right. Come during the off days, whatever. We'll always help right. you. And then we, start, we we came to a point where we had to kind of, I don't want to say ration it, but we had to kind of be like, hey, because we had the same people out there always grabbing stuff. And they, right. they would keep taking and keep taking. We finally said, hey, listen, we got to do something about this. And then we right. did something similar to what you're saying. We were like, listen, usually we'd be like, hey, every three weeks or so, we can help you. After that, right. you know what I'm saying? If you come sooner, you come to a church service, you come back on Monday, and we'll let you start your your thing over again. Right. And, and, and that seemed to work. But the problem is, I, once again, to go back, what you're talking about is a lot of the community. Right. And I'm talking about a lot of the church community. Whereas okay. if we were even taking care of our own, like if we were doing what the Bible told us to do. Sure. And we actually took care of others and brought them into that group. And then we took care of them. And that would keep growing in that way. Right. That that would be a draw for people to come to Jesus and the church. Sure. Hey, they're going to look out for me. This is going to help keep me off of these right. type of things. There's a community there. Yep. So that's why I say that without that happening, um, government, like you said, found that hole. And mm-hmm. they found that hole and they did it. And now it's become government's role. Right. To kind of help and, that. And I think to add to what you're saying, when the church does it, it um because because remember a moment ago and let's put those words back up on the screen here real quick because i think there's something good to point out they said it's wrong to force someone to pay for the support of others and welfare corrupts people's motivation so if we mm-hmm. if we were to narrow down welfare away from just government handouts and mm-hmm. we were to say welfare is any time that one person gives something unearned to another person or persons right right just anything whether whether it's a cup of soup or it's a $20 bill. Right. Okay. Anytime you give somebody something that they didn't earn, they didn't cut my grass, they didn't, you know, do any work around the house for me. I just gave it to them because they were in a time of need. When you start seeing, uh, you know, an entity, whether that entity is a person, a church, or the government, if any entity starts doing that on a regular basis, then I believe that it absolutely corrupts people's motivation. Mm-hmm. Bring that up because one of the things that you point out, you said, hey, church, we don't do it on church days, right? Um, because what you would end up having is a lot of people showing up on church days Mm -hmm. and they're going to want to be fed or whatever. And it's going to distract from what you're trying to do. Yeah, Our real purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when things are free, people want more of it. Yes. And, um, you know, when there's no cost to it. And so I look at it and I say one, like you were saying, different organizations, whether it's the church or whether it's the the local atheist chapter, right? Whatever. Or PETA or Mm -hmm. whomever, right? They should be looking out and saying, look, the, the people that are involved with us, you know, how can we help them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what I think we would see is, um, one, we'd see things that are better off. It'd be more local. Mm-hmm. And then you would also see mm-hmm. where different organizations would have different um, times and criteria for assistance. Okay. Yes. You know, uh-huh. and I think these kind of things would go toward benefiting people. Because if I could only come to you on a Saturday and say, hey, I'd like to get some extra food, mm-hmm. if, if you're only available on Saturday, and I'm not willing to go to these other groups, which a lot of people are. They, yeah, they're, they're willing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's just say I don't want to go to them because maybe they have a criteria that I don't like. Yep. Okay. Which does happen. Oh, yeah. And um, so then I have to ration more. Well, that's kind of far, that's part of the problem, right? Like part of the problem of of welfare and people not having resources and stuff like that is the way that they use the limited amount that they do have. Like my, my parents would go shopping and, and we had, we used to call it the day old store. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Here it's like the bread store and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my parents would go there because four boys and we were broke. Right. And, and uh, so they would go and they would pile up with all this stuff at the one time. And so we as kids didn't know anybody. We just, hey, we're going to eat all this. My parents yep. were like, no, you know, that has to last. That's not just for today. Right. And we're like, what? And, you know, right. we didn't, yeah, because it was just given to us. Like, we're just going to eat this. Right. And you get a little bit older and you go, oh, that's what they mean, not just for today. You have to kind right. of ration this out a little bit. Now, with this, We've already kind of said what I've got right here, in fact, is we've produced a lazy citizenry. Yeah. In, in that... Um, all around. Yes. We're not just talking no, about people on welfare. Not, no, no, all the way around. Um, we, we've come to this point where we realize, well, government will pay it. And, and let me tell you where I first saw it. Years and years and years ago, um, I, I went into this house of some people that we knew, and um, they were explaining to me, it's like, I walked in, this is before big screen TVs were everywhere and houses mm-hmm. and stuff like that and all, and I walked in and I'm like, whoa! And, and from the outside, it was like, um, it'd be very similar to what we would refer to as the projects, be a HUD home, stuff along those right. lines. Um, so we, the outside, you're like, okay, and then you go inside and you're like, nice furniture and yep. big screen TVs and everything. And I remember, I'm like, okay, so we hung out for a little while when we left, I said, 
where'd they get all that stuff? And they're like, oh, they're on welfare. And they have these kids. And, and that's truly what they were doing. Right. Now, remember, this is a long time ago. Yeah. But that's that's what they were doing is they had this lifestyle provided by the government by just, well, just have another kid. And then I get a certain amount of money. Right. For, and that's truly what was happening. Right. And, and so there was no work happening. There was nothing nothing forcing them to get out into it. And, and, and I think that in reality, that's become our problem. Now, here's the issue. Who's going to be the party that takes that away? Right. The party who says we're done with the handouts. Right. That is political suicide. Oh, yeah, absolutely. OK, because now people have gone, wait a minute, because they've learned I can vote in my lifestyle, basically. Right. If I vote for this person, he's going to give me these things for free. Right. So when the next one tries to come in and say, we're done with this. OK, well, you're right. done. Here's the problem. Libertarians have take the stance that he has right there, which is what we kind of would believe in. Right. OK. How do you walk up to somebody and say, hey, let me explain to you something. All those free handouts you're getting, done. Right. As a candidate, you're like, whoa, um, we're not going to do this. We're against those type of things. Right. Well, guess what you just did? You just lost the people who are relying, who have been trained by government that they right. are the savior, that right. they provide for us. So now you try yanking that away, which libertarians are trying to do. You, you've you almost co committed political suicide from the start. Right. Because you're trying to take away what's getting them through. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why... I have always been more, um, I guess I've always been more inclined toward the Republican Party. Even when I became a libertarian, I became a little bit more inclined to them just because I look at the Republican Party and say, like, the, my some of my biggest beefs with you are your foreign policy, mm -hmm. right? And there's some really bad foreign policy there, you know, Afghanistan, <laughs> you know. Um, but then on the uh, for the Democrats, I look at it and I say they got a lot of social policies that I really disagree with. And the challenge, I think, is I think it's easier to withdraw from a foreign country mm -hmm. than is to withdraw from something that you're giving your own citizens. Right. Because, I mean, I could walk around town, to my, you know, maybe not in my neighborhood. We have a relatively nice neighborhood. But mm -hmm. if I lived in an area where there were a lot of people that were on some sort of assistance and I were to walk around and I would say, hey, man, should we, should we stop this war? Should we bring our troops home? They're probably like, yeah, yeah, I don't even know a terrorist anyway. Like, whatever. Right. Terrorist ain't coming over here. Mm -hmm. You know, so they would be more confident. I would, I would be more likely to get a yes out. But if I went down to them and I said, hey, should we um, should we withdraw some of these programs that uh, you need, that you have determined that you need for a day-to-day -day life? I'd be like, no, no, I need that, right? What's the answer there? Okay, and I actually... Can I get there in a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I actually have that. Like, okay, right. how, how do you no, no. address you this? To, how do you get if, to... If we got to... If, 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 if there's still a path that we need to travel to, to get to that. Okay, point. okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Because he, here's the problem. That we... How do you encourage a group of selfish people mm -hmm. to help others? Because right. that's what ultimately is going to have to come down to. It's going to come right. down to that, okay, <clears> if we pull this away, there is a void there now. Right. There's got to be... And, and the problem is I, I don't think that we have this community anymore that's willing to help others. Now, if you look online and you, you go on Facebook or stuff like that, you probably do on Twitter also, I don't know, mm -hmm. um, where libertarians are pretty good about, especially lately, about getting um, handicap accessible vans to people. Like okay. they're, doing, they're raising funds and they're buying right. these type of things. Um, but I, and I think that's great and people will get behind that. But what happens when it's the lesser issues? What happens right. when it's not a handicapped person who's trying to get here and there? What happens right. when it's just the guy down the street who just wants these type of things? Right. You know, so how do you get people on board to start filling in that void that government's filling right now? Right. Okay. Um, so let me ask you a question. So if we look at that, because a lot of people will say, what can we do about the homeless? Right. And a lot of people will go, well, we should help them and we should take these funds. Help them right out of the park so my child can play. <laughs> right. So get them off the slide, dude. Am I right, Dave Smith? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> push that button right there a little bit. Right. So so here's what happens is if we're talking about taking money and going and helping the homeless, isn't that just another form of welfare? Right. Isn't that just the idea, the same premise that we're going to take this money to go help these other people who don't have anything to do with it in that sense? Right. Um, so I have here, I says, what is the solution? Like, okay, so we know that this is all the problem. Like, how do you, how do you address it? How do you say, okay, we're going to stop these 120 National welfare programs. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you just shut it off? Like, realistically, like, can you just go, okay, because this month we're done? Because we live in a society that votes. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can just shut it off. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, in theory, you could if you could convince everybody to vote in that way, but you're going to have two major hurdles with, with, with two different groups of people. The group of people that are receiving it, because mm -hmm. they still get to vote. Right. And they're not going to vote against their their daily life interests. Right. 
right? Like that would just be absurd to even think that they would. There might be a small handful, yeah, but, as a take, whole, but, but more, but, 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 but as a whole, they won't. Then you're going to have the other group of people who are like, they feel like, hey, if I do this, I'm going to be contributing to some sort of harm to this person. Like, you know, they're, they're the ones that they're, they're going to have maybe trouble sleeping at night effectively because they're going to be like, I did this in, in every and they're story. Not gonna have their, they're not going to have their food. They're right. not going to. Some kids every gonna be story that they hear, they're going to be like, "Oh, boo hoo! Uh -huh. I was the problem of that." Right. So they're they're not going to be looking at it like there is going to be a pain in shifting, and I I I, I want to uh, I will accept that pain because I know that ultimately this is a better path um, because a lot of people just don't want to don't want to they don't want to endure that kind of pain. Right. And so I think those are going to be your, your biggest challenges. So can you, could we do a, did we give them a warning? It says, hey, listen, guys, in six months, right? this is all going to crap out. Or, or in six months, this program's going. And then six months later, Honestly, this program's going. I think that the only way to achieve this mm -hmm. is to seek out the people that are currently receiving these benefits mm -hmm. and get to know them, figure out who they are in general. Okay. And then look for ways that they can uh, that that we can reduce or uh, remove obstacles that are preventing them from doing it their own way. Now, who does that? Who's the employee? Who's the government agency that goes and meets with all of these people? No, and people like us. You know, so I, let me give you a really good. Okay, example. so how do I take time out of my busy life that I'm just working to do what I can? How do I go now find I, these? People? I think we. I, I don't. I think we, you know, I think libertarians can do it just in general. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of us spend a lot of time, a lot of people spend a lot of time doing nothing. Like, right. I mean, something. We're like, oh, I'm on Twitter right now. Like, but no, you're doing nothing, right? Like, that's not really affecting anybody. Okay. I think we need to get out and say, look, I'm going to shift my time and I'm going to go and use it productively. And it could be in a number of ways. It doesn't have to be in any one particular way. So when I was, um, when, you know, we talked about in the last episode about me being a youth director and working with, you know, the kids on the wrong side of the tracks, if you 11th will, Street. the Eleven Street kids okay. is what we called them. Um, and you know, one of the, you know, I, I learned a lot mm -hmm. by interacting by, with people. Yes. You know, and um, not just about them, but about the things, about the institutions that they have to navigate. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the young men that I worked with, he was like, I don't know, 16 or 17. And I think I've told this story before where he wanted to, um, he wanted to eventually move out. And so we went to the local credit union mm -hmm. to get him a bank account. Yeah. And I think I told this story mm -hmm. before, but just, you know, since, yeah, yeah, since yeah, news, so we went to the local credit union where I banked and I said, Hey, um, I would like to get this young man a bank account here at the credit union. And I said, here's what I'm doing. I'm working with him as, as a youth leader at the church. And we're trying to get him to save up so much a month, uh, so much money so that he has first and last month rent. Mm -hmm. And then he'll be able to go out and get an apartment, move out on his own, and hopefully, you know, sustain himself, you know, long enough to really start bringing feed, some of that cycle, you know, break the mm -hmm. cycle. Right. And um, so here's what I found out. Because he lived at home, there was a cap on how much money the whole family could save at any given time. And if they exceeded that cap, then uh, they would lose their benefits. And then, and then if he left the house, then they're going to need those benefits at right. that point. Cause... Right. And mm -hmm. and the problem is, he he was kind of trapped because he couldn't save up enough money to get out on his own right. without endangering the family's assistance, which prevented him from getting out on his own and not needing assistance. So right. So these ahead. kind when we work with people, we find out about yes. these kind of institutions. Uh -huh. And, and limitations. But, but you get a chance to also learn it's not everybody's just trying to mooch off the system. And I right. want to make that very clear. Oh, not, yeah. Some people are getting assistance because they truly need some right. assistance. Right. Life change, whatever things right. happen. And, and so I, I kind of start wondering, is there a way to do a short-term welfare type program where we say, hey, listen, our goal is not to make you part of the system. Right. Our goal is to temporarily help you. Right. You know, maybe it's six months. Maybe you know, maybe you had a life altering situation, mm -hmm. and, and so now you need for the next six months or so. We 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 want to help you. Right. Okay. Because I'd far better rather help people in our country than sending right. all these funds to other countries right. to you know learn transgender classes in Egypt. Sure. You know those type of things. Right. So I so I looked at it. And I go. There's money better spent, but we're not. We don't want them to just 
got it, and then now they right. spend the next 12 years on the yeah. system. So is there a way that we instead say, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do? And, and, and I think, and, and I'm not sure, it's just no research, and we, somebody way smarter than us can figure it out. But I if think such if, a person if, if it existed, existed. And they find that person and they happen to be watching, which, all right, that already limits it down. Right. So if they're smarter than and watching. Right. So inside of that, I, I believe it started, a lot of this was temporary. Mm-hmm. This was this is temporary assistance. You get it for X amount of time and then you're done. You're expected to move on with your life at that point. Right. So I think that maybe if we could get to that, like right. that become this stepping stone to getting people up and running and doing life on their own again. I had an argument with some friends that came over Friday night about okay. oh, occupational licensing. Okay. And I believe that that is one area where we can really assist people because occupational license, and here's what we discovered after a long uh, debate with two friends and then one left because he got about midnight. The other one, um, he tends to stay a little bit later sometimes. So, you know, like two o'clock in the morning. We were looking at, I think it was from the Institute of Justice's website. Okay. And they were giving some data about, uh, I think it was here in Florida, actually, but about um, barbers. Oh, it turns, out, it turns uh-huh. out barbers require like uh, the equivalent of like 150 days, like eight hour days of training yep. to become a barber. And they have and to go to school. Going. And they have to go to school mm-hmm. and they have to spend like, no, I'm sorry. There was 1,200 hours of school that they had, which turns out to be about 150 days, um, eight hour days. I've had a conversation with a lady who cuts my hair. I've yeah. learned entirely and, more than I wanted to. And, um, and, and so, so they have to have that level of training, but EMTs only need about 34 days of training. Think about that for a second. And it's like, wait a minute. An that EMT versus my shows life. up to my house to make sure I don't die. Mm-hmm. The barber cuts my hair. So that hopefully my wife looks at me and says, wow, you're pretty handsome. Okay. You know? That's an amazing haircut. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, so like <laughs> <this is laughs> 34 days versus about 150. Like, it seems that's odd. insane. Mm-hmm. Right? And so here's what I said. I was like, um, to be a barber, effectively, you need a pair of clippers and some, some scissors. And somebody and, and a and comb. A, and, and some hair in front of you. Yeah. Uh-huh. And now... Could things go wrong? Yes. Could you clip someone's ear off? Yes, you could. Does that happen? Not very much. I, like nobody's <laughs> ever, nobody well, knows of a story. I've been getting my hair cut for a long time. Yeah. That's never happened once. You know, they're, they're still have, good. And, and I've lived in multiple states, multiple cities, and I've never once heard somebody say, don't go to that barber shop because that guy will chop your neck they, off. They, with they, the, call, they have to call the ambulance right. to get me there. And, that, and the it, ambulance guy yeah. couldn't help me because he only had 34 yeah. hours of it's, training. It's <laughs> always, it's always... Don't go there. They can't cut hair. They can't cut hair. That's it. Yep. That, and you know what? I'm like, people know what a good haircut looks like. Mm-hmm. They know. I, I, I could tell you exactly which places when I was younger and I had hair, which places that I could go and get the haircut that I want. And I, I didn't ask for anything elaborate. I was like, look, you know, give me a, a, a little bit of a fade from the top to the sides, you know, trim it up along the edges and cut it about, and I think it was an inch and a half short on the top. That was it. Like... Uh, that's probably like introductory barber school stuff. And if they did it wrong, you had to wait a couple weeks for it to grow back out. Right. No big deal. Uh, exactly. So, and so these kind of things, I think, are barriers to people be, you know, being able to go their own way. Because here's the problem. People have few resources. And so w- if I wanted to be a barber, I have the money and the time. Well, maybe, you know, probably right. the, I, I have the money and the time more so than many people who because they're trying to in, work, if they are working they're trying to feed their family today they're trying to eat yep you know like i got plenty of food and yep. i you know i mean you know i i'm just in a better position mm-hmm. so i could tolerate those requirements people that need that might need assistance they're not in that position but they might be able to say hmm i do have a hundred it's my last 150 dollars maybe i'll go and buy some you know, some haircutting equipment so I can, because you know, I'm pretty good at it. Right. Right. And so, so they might be able to spend that last $150 on it, but do they have, because it's like $10,000 to go to school. Like I said, and do they have 10, do they have 10 grand? No, they don't have 10 grand no. to go to school. So, you know, these kind of barriers, I think are, are one of the first so things that we can do. Remove the barriers. <clears throat> yeah. Remove, remove barriers. Oc- you're so talking about occ- occupational skills. Occupational barriers. licensing is one okay. of them, where we remove barriers that allow people to go out and find their own success in some way. Right. Because, Ultimately, I don't know what people in the in, in the you know in lower socioeconomic status groups here, even here in Jacksonville mm-hmm. have or don't have. Not as a whole, not necessarily as an individual. Maybe the one or two that I've met, 
right? So I don't know what they have at their home. They might have a relatively decent car, but are otherwise down on their luck. So they can go in Airbnb. I'm not I'm Airbnb, but they, they can go Uber. in Uber. Uber. They can mm -hmm. go be an Uber driver and pick up a little bit of extra cash. Or maybe they have a decent looking home. They can be an Airbnb operator, right? So there's all these things that we keep putting barriers up. Well, the, but hold on. See, what I'm questioning though is the real barrier, the fact that we just keep giving them the money, that there right. is no motivation right. to say, hey, I want, because if you think about it, I get, the, the mentality says I can sit here and get what I need. Like right. I still, you know, I still got my phone. I still watching right. some Netflix. I'm still in my house. I'm good. Or I can go work. Right. I can spend time away and right. muscle through that. And, and, and that's where, first of all, we got to have the opportunities that are available. Then the opportunities need to be better than the alternative. Right. Because ultimately that's what you're trying to get. You're trying yes. to make somebody make a so but you have some people who aren't worried about their earthly things. Hey, you know what? I'm eating every day. I don't right. care what my house looks like. I mean, I'm good. And, but, and so what is what gets them off of the welfare? I think that's knowing our that knowing that welfare from the state is going to come with a little bit more discomfort than some other option. Now, is it wrong? So they is... might miss a few meals because maybe the money isn't as as much as it is. You know, and I'm not saying it's a lot of money. I'm just saying maybe it's even less. And it's like, man, honestly. I mean, I don't really like being hungry every other week, you know, for a couple of days while I'm, you know, waiting for my welfare check to come in, right? Just as an example. Mm -hmm. So they might say, it's better off for me to go and do this, you know, whatever, this this job right. or something. Well, because I would rather have more here's, food. Or, you here's, know. here's the other side of it. And it's funny because I was reading an article and they're talking about uh, that fraud, welfare fraud. And mm -hmm. this and they're like, oh, that's minimal. And I'm like, no, it's really not minimal because I am fully aware of many people who get food stamps and they sell them 50 cents on the dollar. Yep. Okay. That's a very common yep. thing yep. around. And I'm like, okay, that right there is another way they're going. I'm going to take Because they can this, use that money for something else. Anything else they want to. Right. So now as they're getting the SNAP program, they're getting their food allotment. And now they're taking it and they're, they, I can, they're like, hey, I can eat off right. 75 bucks. I don't need 150. Right. And I'm going to sell the other 75. And then whatever they're doing is what they're doing. So now it's just another way that the government says, we got you. Right. And, and the thing is, the problem is the government knows that they're doing this. Right. They know. Right. They don't say anything. Right. So the question becomes, why? What is really the reason that government wants that? Why does government want to be like, I'm the one giving you this and I'm giving right. you Is it just control? Is it just um, control? That's, I think that's a lazy answer. Right. I, I don't mean it's yours. No, like, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think a lot of people say, like, they say, like, oh, oh control. the government wants to control. Um, I don't think it's that insidious necessarily. Uh, what I think really is the case is you get people that are that are, get elected to office and they want to do something. They want to be known for something, right? I don't think it's so... I mean, there is a, poor, a, a variant of control there. Right. right, like nobody wants to be the president if they don't want to control. So you gotta something. have that mentality. So, you, so yeah. there is a level of control, but I think more of it is that they want to be known for something. They're looking to establish their name and say, "I did this. I helped this. You know, I I did something about the homeless here in town." And the easiest way to do that is just to give people stuff, because otherwise you have to endure the like. Let's say that I became the mayor of Jacksonville. No, you ball party. No. No. Okay, but let's just say that I ran and I became mayor. And then I said, all right, we're going to do something about, and this is, let's just say that we had some programs here in town. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're going to do something about that. And, you know, that we're going to, um, people that were, you, you, you know, in, in need. And I said, we're going to do something about this and we're going to try to get people off. And so I started making it a little bit more uncomfortable, right? This doesn't mean that they're going to starve, right? Just right. say like, look, we're going to make it more uncomfortable. So instead of, you know, this much money, you're going to get half of that. So guess what? You won't die. You'll, right. have, you'll have money, but you might actually, you know, every week you may have, you may find that you're, you're missing a few meals. You so, know, you're not going to die from that, but it's not going to exactly. be pleasant. So you're suggesting a gradual step down of it. Gradual step down, but it does need to be discomfort. Okay. So do you, but because nobody's going to be willing what, to go through the okay, work. That's great for the people who are already on it. What about for the ones coming in? Do you go... Okay, now do you say, okay, six months, and then you are, we're out of this? But then here's the thing. Here becomes my question. Libertarians, we go, we shouldn't be doing any of that. These are right. people's responsibility to go out and in life and do what they right. got to do and work and get what they got to have. But then even if we go, all right, yeah, we'll give them six months, aren't we kind of going against our own thinking a little bit? Because we want um, none. Well, it depends but, on who you are, right? Like okay. there, are, there are those who are saying, no, zero, right? And they're like, I, I, I disagree with it all. So... They kind of backed themselves in a corner. 
Okay. I am one of those people that's I'm more of like what you might call an incrementalist. And I say, look, like things got to happen. You know, Rome wasn't built overnight. It's mm -hmm. not going to be taken down overnight unless the whole thing crumbles. And that's usually no good. That's not, and that's not overnight. You know, and mm -hmm. so we have to do things incrementally. And then, and, and so this is why I start with making sure that the opportunities are there, because why would you make it uncomfortable for people if the opportunities weren't there for, for them to resolve that, that uncomfortable, that discomfort, right? You know, I, I can't, I can't basically put up all these barriers for you as a person and then say, ha ha, well, I, that's not how it's said, but you know, can't put them all up and be like, well, I'm sorry, Tub, but you know, all these things are out of reach for you, but that's just, you know, I really need to protect everybody else and I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this. Like, I can't put those up and keep them up and then turn around and be like, dude, why are you on assistance, man? Like, why don't you go out and get a job? Right. I can't get a job because all the ones that might have been available, you took away. So we need to give those back. We need to make sure that people have more opportunities. And and they have to be not just, it can't just be like barbers. Because not everybody's going to be a barber. Yeah, but, but the problem is, is that once you say we're going to give people more opportunities, it, it goes, okay, opportunity at what? And, and so who really wants to go to a job they don't like? Again, you know what I'm saying? So again, if we give them this job, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I, I get it. I get the idea of, so you want to pull me off of this, but you have a job for me. It, it's the same way that we just complained when Biden shut down a pipeline and says, well, they can go make solar panels. Right. What? Right. Right. And, 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 and the problem with that is the problem with that line of thinking is one, it's very narrow. He's like, they can go make solar panels. They can go be developers. And, and what you're, you know, cause I think he said that he one did. time, uh -huh. you could be software developers. And the problem is you're specifying one thing. And what we need to do is we need to remove barrier after barrier after barrier all these different areas so that people can choose and be like you know what i don't want to be a software developer but maybe cutting hair will work or maybe this so will work, are or you maybe saying this will that work. you the first step then is to remove all those barriers deregulate and then we get into pulling away once the you start programs. deregulating and you make it super easy for people to go in any number of different paths and make money with somebody else but how, okay they but won't what, do it at well, first because you did not right. address the laziness issue correct you, they won't that, do it at just first because they have a thousand right. opportunities out there anyway and they're like right. i'm not going to do any of those they won't do it so then do you then end up pulling the funding even then then you deal with the funding now okay i'm not a fan of pulling the band i mean in some ways i'm a fan of pulling the band-aid off but i think well I, I don't think that our society is prepared to like tolerate we will have to crime it. and everything if you do that right from the start if, if we pull the Band-Aid off, mm -hmm. we're going to see a spike in things we don't like. Right. And I think that spike will drop and then it'll level off to a, 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 an appropriate so are, level. Right? That appropriate thinking, meaning like tolerable, tolerable. I guess. So with that thinking, though, are we too far gone? No, I don't think we're too far gone. I think the answer is to deregulate the hell out of our economy. Okay. Then turn around and say, we're going to make being on assistance uncomfortable. So uncomfortable that no, you won't die. But you're going to wish gonna, you did. <laughs> you're going to you're, you're gonna be like, you know what? I'm better off going and getting uh, some actual honest work. Right. And looky here. It, I've got so many options because they deregulate okay. the hell so, out of the, all right, but the, the, problem co is, the economy. Or how the, fast do you really think that's going to happen? I mean, the, once again, that's great in theory. But in practice, you're not going to deregulate everything. And so this is going to take time to start right. tearing all those down. In the meantime, while you're tearing all this down, you still got people just taking and taking and right. taking and taking. So when do you finally go, wait a minute, our goal is zero I mean, you could, welfare. You could do it simultaneously, right? You could start saying, like, we're going to start reducing so that at least we save some money. Right. Right. So you can say, we're going to reduce... Um, we're going to, you know, maybe look at those 120 programs and say, turns out this program. We're going to go down to 90 next right? month. Because think about it. <clears throat> out of all 120 programs, are all 120 of them so, uh, so ingrained with the population that we have to have them? Or is it just kind of feel that way? Uh, there are some that are like WIC, Women, Infant, Children. Yeah. It, probably not going to pull that one first. No. Right. You know, it's like, funny because like that's, that's not going to happen. That's what that's one program I always approved of. Right. Because it's very structured. It's very hard to cheat that program. It's right. very kind of, no, here's what you're going to get. Right. And more often than not, it's not stuff that, because if you sell that to somebody, they're just going to go get cereal and milk. And they're right. thinking, oh, do this. Right. Yeah, you know, so it, I've always liked the WIC program right. as far as that goes, just because the way that it's kept pretty right. tight. But there may be another. So you might be able in the first year to say, look, we're going to drop just two. Mm -hmm. Just two. Right. And we're going to figure that out. Connecticut, but, uh -huh. Connecticut, who's spending what sixteen hundred dollars per capita per person on their wealth? And, and you understand that's one of the highest per capita wealthiest states right. in the country. And so what? What? 
That's that's what, they're, they're probably spending, in all honesty, right. probably where they're spending most of that money is the area I grew up right. in, Connecticut. Yeah. It's probably just that right there. And Connecticut can start looking at their budget and say, all right, how do we get this down to 900, 800, now, right? And start reducing if it. If these are federal granted money, Okay, it's federal that's, money. That's, okay, so now, and, and you gotta say this where a lot of filters down from. Federal might actually be a good idea to just pull the just say, you know, pull the bandaid off in some areas because there's, you know, like that's a nightmare. That, that's what I'm saying. And, and so the thing is, you say okay, anything that's federal, the states are gonna go. Well, we're not even gonna get involved in that, dude, because that's you right. know what I'm saying. The, so so here's the thing: Do we think that there's a way to get through this, and that part of the problem, and I think there is waste overall. Right. Um, I've I've known people. There's three of them inside the same house getting all. They're all getting food stamps. Right. And a lot. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I, I look at that. I go, dude. You know, there are people out there who could really use that, and they and right. they've got it into here. So, is it possible the issuance of the funds is mm -hmm. the problem? Who determines who gets them? Who follows up could with be. them? Who makes that the thing? Right. Do we take it out of? Let, let's just be honest. Do we take it out of politicians? Politicians, you can no longer vote something in some form of welfare. You cannot do that anymore. Right. We're done. So we're going to take what we have existing, and now we're going to get real people, preferably not government employees. Right. They're going to track this, and they're going right. to go meet these families. And then, do you think at that point right there, they start saying, "Okay, wait a minute," kind of what you said. We can start getting involved. We can start going to people. Right. The problem is. Regular people, and like it or not, we can dog out the libertarians because the libertarians are, we might be better than others about going out and moving things in society to kind of, hey, we're going to do our, our part. Right. But we, we're still just as guilty. We don't, oh, yeah. we don't spend all of our free time. People going out are people. Do, exactly. So the thing is, we can say, we're going to go help them. We're going to, but the, the reality of that is, no, we're not. Because here's what we think. And then we're going to be honest. I work, you know, I work all week and I, you know, my time off. I, I want to breathe and I want to enjoy time with my family. Right. I don't want to have to sacrifice my time for people who didn't want to work anyway and right. go tell them. And it's it's a level of selfishness, but it's also, it's a, kind of almost an understood level of selfishness. You know what? Right. They did work all week. Why right. should they have to give their time, forced to give their time to go right. do these type of things? So do we come up with an agency? Maybe it's going to have to be, unfortunately, temporarily, it's going to be funded by the government. It's, it's just the reality of it. Mm. Because where else are they going to get the funding from? So, I'm, no, here's what I'm saying. That an agency right. that is in charge of distributing funds and following up with people that their goal is to say, okay, you understand, you get six months. Right. You're on month four, and you only have two more months. This is going to stop. But here's what I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to send you in the direction of jobs. Yeah. Like, how I, I, think the, I think ultimately the problem with that is going to be the same thing with every other government program mm -hmm. is it gets corrupted. Every single one of them get corrupted because you get politicians in there. And that's what I just said. You got to pull right. that out. You got to pull that out. And so what, what may be the, um, what may be for libertarians, the mm -hmm. answer is, uh, and they won't like hearing this. Sorry, peeps. But uh, the answer may be that before we can hope to start pulling these programs or, or reducing regulation that mm -hmm. will allow people to do more things, um, we may have to really start going out there in waging a campaign to get people to really say this this way would be better in so many you know like right now if i like because when i was talking about the occupational licensing with my friends mm -hmm. it's, it's the same conversation over and over and over whenever you have the occupational license you know you're like oh i don't think we should have occupational licensing for you know barbers and someone's like oh so you want a brain surgeon I, I told you, you I know? had this, I had every this single time yeah and um and then even with like barbers and simple stuff you know like they'll say like well what if a barber slices your neck while he's doing a straight razor cut well i don't know i mean like does the does a certificate say he's not going to do that? Like, does that, that, that guarantee think, just it? because you have schooling doesn't mean you won't ever do that like, anyway. You know. Uh -huh. So I think what we, you know, I think we may have to actually go out there and really work hard at uh, at, at campaigning for our ideas as the idea that people want. Okay. Like, yeah, I this really is, want that. This is not right now the popular program. Because the, the, right what you're now, here is not the popular. Right. Because because what happens is. People already have an idea of what they want. They want Tub not to starve, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. right? And if that means the government giving money, well, okay, because I don't want him to starve. And so I think what we need to do is say, I got it. You don't want Tub to starve. But and that's Tubby admirable, cell phone? right? And but don't you want Tub to actually have opportunities all around, no matter what his situation is, whether he was a high paid executive and then got booted because you know he made some bad you know business mm -hmm. decisions and he got booted 
and he has to, you know, and he lost a lot of respect from his peers. And so now he has to start from the bottom. Uh, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want him to, you know, to have all these different avenues to, to, to go in the same way that you would want him to have those avenues if he grew up in a poor home and was like, I would like to be successful and, you know, get out of the hood and all this right. other stuff, right? You know, wouldn't you want, regardless of their circumstance, don't you want them to have opportunities that they just can't pass up? That they're just like, man, this would be great. I would love to be a, okay, so you know, whatever. Let me, let me ask you this. Then. Okay, so you know you're going to get, you know get the pushback from the people who already went through all the certification. You know that's what's going to happen. They'll be, mean, like, they'll be like, wait, I had to go do all of this. Why do I... It's gonna happen, right? So, like, we can't just say this like it's gonna. Well, and they're, and they're all gonna go. Yes, that's right. a great idea. No, because once again, you said it. I say it often. People are people, right? And in that, they're gonna be angry about. Wait a minute! I worked my tail off to right. get this certification. You yeah. just want to let these guys walk into it. Type I mean, of thing. it's like it's immigration. Already it's already it's like, it's like immigration, right? Yeah. You know who some of the worst. I don't want to say worse. You know who oh. the most, the strongest opponents uh -huh. of are the ones uh, who came in legally are the ones who came in yep. through the legal channels, uh -huh. and they're like. I worked hard to get here. And, How but, come this but person who just popped the border? That's gets a it, that's know. a legit argument. That's, right. that's a that's a legit and it's legit for the people who did right. rest their pump to go through all of that stuff. And I think this is part of our campaign, right? In the same way that we talked to you know someone who's immigrated here and they you know went through all this effort to come over, um, whatever it was, you know, all the time that they invested, the money that they invested, and whatnot. And we need to explain to them, like, look, yes. However, we think that this particular system is not working to our benefit. And this system over here would work toward our benefit. And turns out we can actually get there and it actually doesn't harm you. Yeah. Okay, so what happens to the people that go, nah, I'm good? I mean... There, so there has to be a cutoff. There has to be a Well, level. for the immigrants, we, we revoke their status and we send them out and be like, you don't want to... Well, yeah, we went into immigration here. I'm still sorry. So, I'm, remember, I'm dealing with U.S. citizens. Right, right. U.S. citizens who are, who are right now, right. That they're getting some form of assistance. And, and do we end up having to tell them it ends here. Right. And, and then we go, hey, listen, here's the thing. And, and then maybe do we say you have to prove yourself that, but then we can make the argument of right. what do you, why are you really worthy? I, 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 so, I, I think there are going to be, so I think there are going to be areas where you can, it ends here. There are going to be areas where you can say it ends in six months. When you say areas you program or areas as a regional areas? Uh, programs. programs. Like, I think okay. there's going to be, there's going to be elements of the system that we have today where you can end it now, end it later. Um, you know, you, you, and, and then some that may just be more incremental. Yeah, but I think the I mean, first and foremost idea really is to get people on board with the idea that the system currently right now is not working and it's not doing the job that it said it's going to do because we, we now, have people that are still in poverty. I almost, I almost take the opposite approach of that. I'm almost on the other side where it says, no, you got to you got to cut them off. To, they have now have a drive, right? Because them just sitting back on tier right, that's a good idea for them, right? Until they feel it hit yeah. them, and they and don't I care. Would, I would normally agree, but we have a voting population, mm -hmm. and so the idea of convincing everybody that hey, we're going to pull the car, uh, the rug out of the out from underneath somebody, and tell them here you go, make you know mm -hmm. make your way. Uh, I just don't think it's realistic. I don't think it's practical. I don't. I think you're going to have way too many people object and go nope. And, right. and so I think what ends up having to happen is we have to convince people that the grass is greener on this other side, if you will. And once we convince people of that, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't changed a single policy, but we've gotten people on board. What's then the, we can have the argument that of magic, what we need to do. What's that magic number then? What's the magic number of, okay, we got enough people on board now who like the greener grass idea. What, what's the number? Is it two thirds of the people? Is it 50,000? Like, what's the number when you go, okay, we have enough people who are buying into our idea. Shut them down. Like, right. what, what, when, did, when does that happen? I, I'd say you got to get 30, 40% of the population. And the reason why is. No, hold on, hold on. Population or people who are on the assistance? Voters. Anybody voting? You got to get 30, 40, 30, 40, 40% of the population that votes to say, yeah. There is a different direction. We should probably drive in that. Okay. Start there. So, all right. Because you don't need 100%, no. because not 100% of the people vote to begin with. Right. And so you need, you know, roughly 30, 40%, because then they can start coming. When you have that many people on board, what, hold on. then we have. What do you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you think voter turnout looks like the day when they go, hey, if you don't come in and vote, because let me tell you something, that drive is going to be huge. Once right. They're going to take all of your benefits away from you. 
Right. They're all coming out. Everybody's sure, autistic sure, is coming sure. out. I understand. And, and, and so you're going to keep losing that vote. No, well, so that, here, that vote you're you're going to keep. Here, losing. Here's my position. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking not so much that we're all going to be like, wow, this is great. We're all going to go vote and pull the carpet out. And, you know, we're all just going to, whoo, and, you know, and it'll be a little bit rough for a couple months, but, you know, we're all happy to do it. I am not envisioning that whatsoever. What I'm envisioning by saying something like 30, 40% of the people just getting behind an idea. That's it. Just getting behind it. And the reason for that is because you and I have been sitting here for about 50, it was about 50 minutes. Yeah. About 50 minutes talking about this, mm -hmm. right? There's only so many ideas that you and I can come up with. Right. We're already on board with this idea that like welfare is not a good thing. Right. It, it is destructive in some ways. It's not helping and not doing the job that it's supposed to in other ways. And it's wasteful and it's all these other things. Right. We are already on board. We're going to be limited in our capacity to come up with ideas and say, this is going to be a good idea. This is going to be a good idea. But when you get like 30, 40% of the people that are like, yeah, we need to do something about this mm -hmm. and it cannot be government. We need to find some other solution. Then what happens is you have a lot of people now contributing to the pool of ideas right. to figure out what they can do. People way smarter then, than us. Uh -huh. Then what you can do is you can start making it more regional, right? You can say, all right, in Connecticut, you know, part of that 30, 40% lives in Connecticut. And so then they can look and say, here are some of the things that are going to work for Connecticut, which may not work in Florida. Florida right? Then you can narrow it down even further. In Florida, we might have some people that say, hey, in Orlando, we've got a bit of, we've got a particular problem that Jacksonville doesn't have. So we want to approach this a little bit slightly. But the first you, thing is to get people talking and the, the on thing is, board okay, well, with different, well, well, better. Well, well, oh yeah. And, and that's good. <clears> See, <throat> the issue though, that we're talking about, we understand right. different, better. Right. If you've been beat down enough, because let's be honest, some of these people in these situations, life's been keeps beating them down and beating right. them down to the point. Remember, you even dealt with it with that mom that one time. Right. It was kind of like, I just feel like I, she remember right. she just took that answer from the school because that's all she knew. Right. Okay. So when you have people in a situation like, I just keep getting beat down. I keep, I, I don't even care anymore. I just, just send me my money. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not buying right. into your ideas. I just, it won't work. It won't work. And that happens. Right. Because they're, they're not always willing to go, this will be great. Because they have been beat down and they right. are questioning and maybe they are trying to raise up three little kids. Right. And, and so I said, this is the danger area. And then my, my fear is if you say, hey, well, this area is down here, it has this. So then does the whole population of Jacksonville go, I go down to Orlando still get my funding. You know, I think that right. we chase problems at that point. We you, just run you, in different areas. You might. But I think what ends up happening is when you get enough people on board with the idea, you do start seeing pockets of change. So the same thing happened with decriminalization of marijuana. Once upon a time, everybody was like, oh, don't smoke marijuana because mm -hmm. you'll be just, you know, you'll be in jail and you're a druggie and all this other stuff. And eventually enough people started coming around to the idea saying, you know what, maybe not so much. And then we start to see pockets of it and it doesn't change in the same way. Right. right. So you've got some states, there's 37 states, I believe, that have decriminalized marijuana at some level. The federal government has not. But 37 states have, you know, they're, they're somewhere between medical and recreational Is this a marijuana. Is comparison? I think it absolutely is. Because, okay, you're talking about weed, which is, hey, well, if people want to use it recreationally, that's fine. They got a thing. But versus you're taking my money and I can't pay my rent. Because I think it's a fair comparison because you're talking about doing something different and confronting people's fears. And this, it's just different fears, right? The fear with drugs is like, oh my God, if we decriminalize marijuana, you know, I'm going to have people breaking into my house to steal my valuable stuff so they can buy a joint, right? And then we start finding out like, okay, some of our fears aren't, you know, we start slowly realizing that our fears um, weren't so grounded in reality. Okay, so. And the, the fears in here would be similar. You would say like, okay, my fear is that I'm not, I'm going to starve to death. My my baby is but not going to have that, that's, food. That's my thing. Right. You, know, you got to come to, you, you, you have to make them completely uncomfortable. You've got to right. take away the resources. But the first thing that has to happen, in my opinion, I'm going back to this, is that people have to be on board with the idea because who knows what ideas might come up? Somebody might come up and say some libertarian in, you know, in Oregon mm -hmm. might, you know, or maybe not even a libertarian. Maybe it's just a conservative who's like, you know, hey. oh, no, conservatives use it already there. <laughs> so some liberal person who is a little bit more inclined toward, um, toward uh, welfare might say, well, you know what? I'm coming around as are many of my liberal counterparts. Conservatives are getting around. We're starting to come. You know what? here's a way that we can approach this that works for Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. And so they may have, you know, the the ear of, of their city or their state right. or people around them that they can try something out in the same, you know, so, but so, but it takes so everybody coming to this it, conclusion. In your thinking, what's the time frame? I mean, that's hard to say. Exactly. I, you know, I don't know. So do we, because 
and the, what you're talking about could easily be another generation of going oh, into could be yeah you, you know what right. I'm saying and in, in the meantime who are in the assistants. meantime we absolutely need to say look we're going to start cutting waste yes and if a particular if there's 120 programs and if if they're not serving the way that WIC does right the people doing what they say they're going to do whatever they are then we need to shut them down and you know what honestly there's you know, you can't shut WIC down. It's too big and there's too many people on it. It's providing actual real benefits to people. Um, even if there is some waste in there and there's some other things, right? right? But that one's way too big. But there may be one that like nobody's ever heard of. And you find out that, hey, this one, uh, a lot of like 70% of the money goes to administration in mm -hmm. the first place. Well, that one's a little bit easier to cut out, right? Because you're actually not harming and, people, and you, right? Not to the not to a you, massive degree. Do you think that right there, what you're saying, would work into the idea if I'm going to talk about if you privatize the company who's in charge is versus the government? Because a, a private company has better use of funds usually. I, I tend to believe that a private company only works best when it is a completely private company that makes its own decisions without any government intervention. And usually when the government is involved, they want a lot of say. So, but what happens What happens when the government says, now remember, we already, I already said you got to remove politicians. You got to get them off right. there where they can promise that. So if you pull them out of it and the government says, okay, listen, here's your funding. Mm -hmm. This is it. And, and it happens often where, you know, you have all these different, you know, whether it's in um, like an art place or, you know, act, like whatever it is, they get these funding and they get the funding from the government. They go, oh, you know, we only have X amount of dollars. We don't get more than this. Right. So what, what if that was this type of premise? They say, hey, listen, we only get X amount of dollars. Right. Do we have to use this wisely. Does that start filtering it down? Do then do they then keep better track of, um, dude, you've been on for five months. You know, your time's running out. Like the, the follow up they get people off of. That ultimately, I'm not ultimately, ultimately, that agency is shuts itself down right. because it's served its purpose. I'm not convinced because I think there's an incentive by uh, on part of people in the government to maintain their um, their organizations, their positions, and so on and so, so forth. So you're saying we are, we're going to just keep it with government and let them try to no, shut I, it down? No, I, I, I'm saying shut it down. Uh, I think I think ultimately the people do, but I think that the people, in order for them to shut it down, uh, in order for them to to say like we're done with this. We need to have alternatives that are in place for people. We need to have things already happening. And in order for that to happen, we need people to have come to the the realization, like you and I, that we've got to do something better. And I think we need to have a lot more than what we have now. And I think that's our biggest hurdle. See, when we talked last week about, uh, in the last episode about education, we talked mm -hmm. about vouchers and we said, look, I'm going to give you, I believe giving you a voucher in your hand for you to take and find a school so that your child, you know, you now become the person yeah, now who's my responsible. Money, it's mine. Uh -huh. You're responsible for that money, right? But and 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 the government doesn't really get to say, like they don't get to say, okay, well you can go to only schools that begin with the letter A for to, to be uh, okay. to be absurd, right? Yep. But when you have a private organization that's 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 set up like this and has government involvement the government usually has some sort of requirements like okay you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this and all they got to do is just change the requirements to make it more and more strict or open or whatever okay, the case so, may be so, what do you think so i think the government would corrupt it uh, oh, no way way easier okay. than the voucher system okay now let me ask you this thing <clears throat> so what if you said okay listen there's this family they're 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 getting they're going to get help for six months or whichever right. it is Here's your six months worth of money. All it right now, right up front. Here you go. Go do what you got to go do. Now they have the resources immediately to say, oh, wait a minute, I can't get this schooling or I can't do this or I can't do that. Or, and they can ration it out or spend it and get focused. Like they, instead, they might take, if they get $10,000 up front mm -hmm. and they go, that's all I get for six months. I'm done after this. You know, that's a lot of money for six months. But the idea that right. they can go, hey, you know what I can go do? I go buy this car. Right. Now I can Uber. Now I can start doing those things that you're talking about. Let's let's open up opportunities for them. So instead of saying, hey, we're going to allow you to be on this forever. Or we're only going to ration this out to you for this long. Okay, here's your thing. Done. Right. We're out. We are we are no longer involved in your life. I mean, I think it could work in some instances. Okay. I, I think actually, I think ultimately the final answer is actually going to be final answers. There's going to be a lot of different ones right. um, that play out. Um, you're going to have to experiment with some. And say, oh, you know what? This one didn't give us the result that we thought it would. You know, just like the idea that you had. It might sound great, but then it may be a disaster. And so maybe one small town does it, right? And I think this is the benefit of doing things on a more local basis is because it's easier to rebound from if things don't go the way that you expect. So if you do it nationally, you could have a catastrophe nationally, right? 
you're like, all right, as a nation, Things we're going to be do great this. for the first three, four weeks. And then yeah, after and that, then all of a sudden it just goes <laughs> the to hell. Gone and... Right. You know, and, and not to say that it wouldn't go to hell at a local level, but it would be easier to compensate. Okay. So what if you said, okay, listen, we're going to let you go to barber school, for example. Right. Okay. So you're getting X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. You're going to get $10,000. This goes to, you know, your rent or your carpet, whatever it is you got to use it for. That's your business. Right. Okay. You want to go barber school? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pay that barber school for you. Right. Okay, that's where you want to go find. We're gonna take we're gonna take this two thousand dollars out of your thing so you can go to this barber school. Go. Now you you you've helped them in the right direction by not just saying go figure it out. You said, Okay, what okay? So what if you said here's X amount of dollars? What wh- which one of these things do you want to go learn about? Right. And they go, I'd like to go learn. Said, okay, good. So out of your ten thousand, I'm gonna take this four thousand. Go. So right. now you've done both. You've said, here's your money. Figure out what you're going to do. We've helped you. We're done. Mm-hmm. We're going we're to keep doing this perpetually. This is going to end. Now, I'm also paying for you to go get the education of this thing you thought you wanted to go do. Right. Does that effectively then answer both questions? Maybe. A format of that. Like, you mean, know, you've got the variations of sure, it figured sure. out. And you start talking about the money. Now, right. do you then say, hey, wait a minute. Do you look at the program and say, hey, listen, here's a family that this might work well for. Right. Because maybe, maybe... Maybe they're a married couple and they're struggling and maybe the guy just got back to work himself. Right. And now the wife is going, hey, I'd like to go do this or whatever. You go, okay, this is a perfect family to try this on. Right. Here's the money. So you're saying that, would still, so that answers all three of the issues. Right. Okay. I mean, it could. And it does. Um, it does. It does. It does. It's the most amazing uh, idea. Let's come up with all the ideas. That will probably just fly. We're good to go. Right. Okay. So, all right. So we're winding down here. Uh, we're up at a bit of a time crunch today. So we're going to have to wind this down. We're just at around about an hour anyway. So we're right about on time. Okay. So here's the thing. And tell me if you agree. There isn't necessarily a one size fits all answer. So we need to get away from this idea that we can do something at a national level. We need to break it up into different regions. You can have the states doing things. You can have cities doing things. But I think ultimately what we at least can agree upon is that we've got to get more people on board Mm -hmm. so that we can come up with ideas. Because maybe it's possible that every idea that we bounced around today is a terrible idea. Or it's a starting point. I always like the idea it's a starting point. And it's very possible that those those ideas could be super duper great ideas Mm -hmm. and they would absolutely work. And it's also possible, like you just said, that it could be somewhere in between where it's a starting point. This is the stepping stone to the next better idea to the next yep. better idea to get us off can we pull can we pull the carpet out of uh, out from underneath people uh, i don't believe that we can only because we have people that will be voting and they won't vote to do that right now the, you could in theory say all right i'm going to convince everybody you know we could say we're going to convince everybody and then one two three we all agree the likelihood of that happening is pretty low in my yeah. opinion so I think what we do need to come up with is, is these kind of ideas. And we need to start talking about ideas and we need to get out there. Um, so I, I, I think that answers the question of like how, because we were going to, we were intentionally saying we're going to start coming up with some, some ideas. Some ideas. And kind of drive. Yep. And, and again, the idea isn't that it's the idea. It's it's the start of. The start of. Let's, mm-hmm. let's have this conversation. Let's get it going. Let's get people excited about a better system. Mm-hmm. Be, and the system that we have is clearly not working very well. And, you know, I mean, we're spending, you know, $1,000 per person. And the question is, do we, you know, in Connecticut, do we need to spend $1,000 per person? And we have to critically look at these things and say, you know what, we're, we don't need to spend that. Maybe we can maybe we can cut out some of this admin mm-hmm. stuff, right? Like whatever the case may be. Right. But we need it. So we need people to get in there and get into office and say, look, if it's an unuseful spend expenditure, we're getting rid of it. That's definitely a must. So no matter what I said, that is absolutely a must at a minimum. And everybody should be on board with that. And if they're not on board with that, then they should not be elected ever by anybody. Conservative, liberal, libertarian. It doesn't matter. Nobody should want somebody in there that's just going to spend money and and, and not even accomplish what they say they're going to do. That's just crazy talk. So I think that's it. You got any final words? No, I'm good. All right. So we're good. (laughs) And we're going to go ahead and close this episode out. Uh, no bill review today. No social topic. We are up against a time crunch today. So this is going to be the episode. Hopefully you learned a whole lot. Um, or at least, you know, this has kind of got the gears going in your mind. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that's the case. And with that, we are out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. 
To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.